And 555 five, five, Foxtrot November, radar contact one mile north of Lebanon Warren. Upon reaching 2000, you're clear direct Skyra. Climb 2000, direct Skyra. Bye, Foxtrot November. So can I load autopilot? Do, yep. Autopilot. Heading. Heading. Just verify your rate of climb with your up-down buttons on the right side. 500 feet's a good rate of climb. Okay. There's 2000, so I can go direct Skyra. Good. So direct. Nope. Just go back in. Procedure, activate. Procedure, activate approach, left 290. Very good. Push in your button and on the G5, engage your GPS. There you go. It's now naving in a head, heading mode because of the GPSS. Got it. If you adjust the altitude, it will pre-arm it for you. If not, you can select the arm. So how do I now set this if this is on? There's nothing to do. It's just going to track the magenta now? Affirmative. It sees that hole, so it's going to do a course reversal. All right. If it didn't have that up there, it would turn inbound with us. Good so far? Yeah, so in the GPS mode, GPSS, yep. this is going to fly in. In the heading mode. In heading mode. Yep, so all of a sudden in GPSS, you need to drop the nav out of your uh, formula. Got it. So what we'll do, we'll go to Skyra, allow it to make a course reversal, We'll suspend this thing by hitting the OBS button. We'll make another track back around, and that way you can log a hold. Okay. The OBS suspends the next sequence on the approach. So if I want to fly just the heading bug, then I disengage GPS. To use the heading bug on the G5 for vectors, First, disengage the GPSS function by pushing the knob in on the G5, selecting the GPSS icon, and disengaging the GPS. At this point, the heading bug will now become active for vectors. So it's going to fly us in. And do a course reversal, come back around. Quick eye traffic. When we're established. Four, two, eight, Lima, left base, we're established back five, in again. Code, Hit the OBS and suspend it. It will continue to keep us in the hold until we unsuspend the approach. Is this the only one, is this the only airport where this is happening? Yeah, because everyone else usually gives you the option to enter the hold. If you're coming off of... Uh, I-69, for example, direct WISPU, it'll prompt you for the hold, and you can you can opt out of it. For some reason, on a Skyra, it throws it out to you without any uh, option. If you wish to drop the hold off, then procedure button, activate vectors to final, will take you to the fix and then on with the approach. Once we are, once this goes active with the type of approach, okay. the message will flash at us. We'll check our message, prompting us to hit this button here. Okay. This line will be illuminated. Okay. We then hit the enter, promptly hitting the approach. Got it. All right. And at that point, you just don't do, there's nothing else to do other than manage your airspeed. This will happen when once we're inside a Skyra. So this is where we're going to suspend nope. it. Wait till you're established back inbound towards Skyra, then suspend it. If not, would it allow us to go straight in? Uh, yeah. Wasn't that what we wanted anyway? No, we want to demonstrate the whole. Got it. The old system without the GPSS steering wouldn't be doing this. You'd have to heading bug yourself around. Yeah. 
Now, at this point, I'd like to point out that you see where the heading bug is? Yes. And it does not see that heading bug at all in GPS -S mode. So just line that up with your inbound course if you'd like. So we'll allow this thing to establish us back outbound. Then I'll clear you for the approach. At that point, if you want to turn yourself back in, you'll have to come out of the GPS mode and then use your heading bug to come back around. Say, wait, say that again? All right. So if we, if we come back out, why don't I just unsuspend it and then fly the approach? You can do that also if you want to fly all the way around the hold again. Well, what I'm asking is, once I start going this way, if I unsuspend it, doesn't it automatically bring me back in? And Affirmative. Oh, you're saying instead of doing the whole hold, you're going to only take me about halfway out? Correct. So you, you say, do you... Instead of having the Garmin G5 guide you all the way through the hold, you can disconnect the GPSS in the Garmin G5, at which point you can then fly your head, heading bug to turn yourself back inbound before reaching the end of the hold. And where will I be picking up the, uh, the um, glide, path, glide slope? Inside of Skyra after the approach goes active, because right now it's just in a terminal mode and will not give you any glide path to follow. So once we get down to our minimum decision altitude, then disengage your autopilot. So now once I cross Skyra, I'm waiting for this to go to approach. Yep, whatever this type of approach uh, is. Uh, six four, two and a half out of the around. Right there. Uh, approach only, Gene Snyder. That's what will be displayed up there. Shortly after that will become the message Early sequence, the procedure, we'll enter, midfield and approach on your uh, autopilot. Two miles out. So I'm going to disengage the autopilot. I'm going to climb back out. On a heading of 360-3000. And then you can re-engage the autopilot tracking the heading mode. But I'll have to go in there once I do that, turn the GPSS off. Runway 10 approach. Message. Approach available. Use procedure before auto. So yep. procedure. Enable autopilot. And approach on your autopilot. And approach. There you go. Cool. Now you've got, because it sees that, you're getting this display here. Yep. It's armed the glide slope. So we'll just wait till we get within about one dot yep. deflection, put in a notch of flaps. Pull and the yeah, decreasing the throttle at the same time so the two pitches offset each other and the autopilot can keep up with it. And take it down to your MDA. 1560. Very good. See your glide pass starting to come to you? Yep. Very good. That drop down just a smidgen more. And that's only because we were in a slower power setting out there in that hole. There you go. Notch flaps. Yep. Reduce your throttle a little bit. That's it, 1700. Very good. Good catch. Green County, 14 Delta is fine. Now, we want to fly us about 80 knots. At this point, you look at your autopilot, and everything on it is solid, nothing blinking at you, which means it's coupled. Richmond traffic, 5 Fox Trot November, 3 mile final, runway 33. Richmond traffic. 100 feet. Got the field. Circle field traffic, guide 19820, about 10 miles to the east of the field, inbound for it. Very go good. On Fly to your runway. Hold our altitude. Bring our flaps up. Very good. I see no activity on the ground. All right. And then once it suspends itself, we'll be 
begin our climb back up on our signed uh, mist. Got it, arriving at waypoint. Richmond traffic, 5 Foxtrot November on the go, runway 33. Richmond traffic. Very good. Pitch up for 80 knots. And come right to your assigned heading. At this point in time, we want to fly our assigned heading. So you go into the Garmin G5, toggle to the GPSS button, turn it off, at which point in time it will then fly the heading bug. Autopilot. Good. Heading. Heading. Check your rate of climb. 500 feet is plenty. And arm your altitude. There you go. ILS 18. Affirmative. Vectors. Correct. Below. At low. Let's activate it because we're only eight miles away from there. GPS guidance for monitoring only. Activity. Very good. Yes. And while you're on the screen, remember this is a localizer approach. Take it out of the GPS mode or you'll forget about it. Now, what you will notice, or probably haven't noticed, is it recognizes the course and automatically sets that in there for you. Okay. This is different in the 182 or in the 206 in that you manually have to turn the needle to the inbound course, whereas in the G5 will automatically set the inbound course for you. Once I intercept, I then put on GPPX. Nope, no. Just hit approach on the autopilot. Because it's not a GPSS approach. So that's the, the key differences between an RNAV and a uh, localizer ILS. Now, if you hit approach on the autopilot now, see what it does. It's got it in standby because it can't see the course. Okay. If you use the heading bug to lead it in, and once it gets close enough, it will move from the arm position up to your top position and capture your uh, localizer. Good so, so far? Yeah, I'm good so far. So as we get closer, you're probably going to turn me in. A Correct. Bit, but yeah, but it will this automatically capture them? Yes. It will capture it. If you don't try to make one of these 90-degree intercepts, because you'll blow through it, and if you get too far away from it, it's not smart enough to correct. Now, what I like to do, especially with the aid of an HSI, is keep my CDI, which is that green bar that's deflected, yep. matched with that white lubber line, and keep the two corners, and use my heading bug, and let it gently bring me to my inbound course. And 555 five, five, Foxtrot November, left turn to heading of 240, you're cleared to intercept. Left turn 240, cleared to intercept by Foxtrot November. Southbound traffic 407 Delta Sierra, turning base for 25 Southbound. So when does this load into approach mode? When it gets real close to that center line, it, it can see when it can see it, it'll change up there for you. Is it going to give us the message to? Nope. Oh, because it's not a GPS. Correct. It will automatically step to the glide path on you. Now, see how it's starting to deflect? Use your heading bug and gently bring it to it. This will help the autopilot to uh, intercept your inbound course. Approach mode is active, so this is, it's now tracking the localizer. Okay, so I'm going to set this to my departure, my low approach. Very good. Currently, it's an altitude hold. The glide slope is armed and should disappear and come up here GS when it captures your glide slope. Like 12, maybe. So that glide slope is there. Oh, good. I'll yeah, wait till it starts dropping out of that box. And once again, that's because you got your airspeed to oh, check earlier. That way it won't get too sloppy and slow. 
go ahead and bring it in. Yep. And reduce your throttle to 1700. It should couple. To the east, inbound, RNAV 25 practice. There it's go. now gone active on your glide slope. Manage your airspeed with your throttle, 80 knots. The autopilot, the approach symbol is not flashing, which means it's coupled. Charlie, turning final for runway 25 Bell Going down to 1116. All good. All good. Connersville traffic, 555 Foxtrot November, two mile final runway 18, low approach only. Connersville traffic. 500 feet. Disconnect. Very good. Right boat traffic, but we're not looking fairly downwind runway. Connersville traffic, Cessna 555, Foxtrot, November on the go, runway 18, Connersville traffic. Uh, climb and maintain 3000, and uh, turn left heading of 090. Or zero. So I can go autopilot. Very good. Head. Heading mode. Yep. I can go 3000, and I can arm that, and I can go 500 feet per minute. Very good. 600 feet per minute. And 555 Foxtrot November, radar contact, climbing through 2100. Climb maintain 3000, you're clear direct uh, Warren County. Climb maintain 3000, clear direct Warren County. By Foxtrot November. Right to 114. The Papa, 10 Push miles this north out of the field, GPS. inbound Very landing, good. runway Switch 13. This. Oh. This. That. Now we're going to be on nav. Correct. And 555 Foxtrot November, upon reaching 3,000, you're clear direct Zacket. Upon reaching 3,000, clear direct Zacket by Foxtrot November. So when you clear me for the approach. I cleared you direct Zacket. Direct Zacket. Which means you're allowed to navigate to Zacket. You're just not clear for the approach yet. Correct. So when you clear me for the approach, I can then arm approach mode. Uh, you can, well, technically no. Why? Well, you already activated the approach when we loaded it, correct? Yes. So now we're waiting for this thing to go from Terminal mode to approach mode, and you'll get the LP plus V, which will prompt us with a message, procedure, enter, approach. We still want to be in heading mode at this time. Okay. So you said this when this goes to terminal mode? It'll go to terminal mode first as we get in closer. Then you'll actually get the symbol for the approach itself. LPV, LNAV, LP plus V, whatever it is, that's what will initiate the message alert. As the sensitivity starts to tighten up on this thing, okay. that triggers your message. And it should intercept that dotted magenta. Okay, traffic Skyline 6289 or Tango's on final for a RNAV mode. 19 approach, uh, just about on top of Blue Lock. That's the one that's out in front of us. You'll notice at this point that the HSI turns to the inbound course automatically. There we go. And once we turn inside a Yoy book, you can report 10 miles yeah, north of the field. Lebanon County, runway 19 at the uh, south end. Lebanon County. 
saw you guys coming in too. Do you Fly see slope RF? LPV. So now we just yes, need to wait do. for message. Message. Uh, hit uh, procedure. Okay. Yep. Enter. Approach mode. Very good. So the, what we want to demonstrate to the uh, members is how to do this with a minimum amount of button pushing to get it to do what you want it to do in various modes, which is RNAV approaches and local IRS approaches. There comes my glide slope. Warren County traffic, Cessna 5, Foxtrot, November, 5 mile final on the RNAV, one, run, RNAV runway 19 approach. Warren County traffic. Warren County traffic, Cessna 5, Foxtrot, November, two and a half mile final runway 19, Warren County traffic. What's our minimum decision altitude? Uh, 12.8 or 12, yeah, 12.80. Thank you. 500 feet.